Hello and welcome to Telesur. This is From the South from our studios in Caracas, Venezuela. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Let's begin with our top news. We begin in Turkey, where police is searching a forest on the outskirts of Istanbul for the remains of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi, who disappeared two weeks ago. They're also searching another coastal city. Samples from searches of the consulate and the consul's residence are to be analyzed for any traces of Khashoggi's DNA. It says, except in the case of grave crimes, Meanwhile, several human rights organizations have asked Turkey to allow the United Nations to investigate the death. Four human rights NGOs have demanded Ankara to carry an independent probe on how Khashoggi died. The journalist disappeared when entering the Saudi consulate on October 2nd. We believe that the only way to ensure that there is no whitewash um, in the disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi is that the uh, United Nations take on an independent, transparent, and international investigation. As international pressure grows for the lack of clarity of what happened with Khashoggi, local media are receiving and revealing different information. Turkish newspaper Jenny Sakaf has said it has access to the audio clip that reveals how the journalist was tortured and beheaded in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Now to Honduras, where troops and police have blocked a migrant caravan from crossing the border from Honduras into Guatemala. Migrants then use a path through a jungle area to avoid authorities. Waves of people have departed from Guatemala at daybreak, leading to Mexico as they try to reach the United States. And while the first group of Honduran migrants has already arrived at the Guatemalan border with Mexico, thousands more are walking across Guatemala on their way to the United States. Honduran migrants are trying to reach the capital of Guatemala to continue their journey to Mexico and the United States. Some have opted to get on trailers, since their fatigue is obvious. Despite that, they say they are not going back to their country. We are not going back, and I am not a leader. I am the people, and for the people, if I die, I die, and if we have to fight, we will have to fight. The conditions in which they're making this journey are not ideal. Overcrowding in trucks and the high temperature of the eastern region of the country has led the Ombudsman for Human Rights to demand controls from the Civil National Police to avoid children being taken in this kind of transport. Those who had begun the journey by truck now have to walk again. It is a very complicated situation because the number of Honduran people that are passing through Guatemalan territory is high. They have the purpose to reach as soon as possible to the border with Mexico, and therefore, they are seeking the way to transport them in a more agile way. The situation is that we know for a fact that some people have suffered accidents or harm when they get into the trucks. It's clear that a large number of Hondurans have chosen to stay on the caravan and walk thousands of kilometers to the Guatemalan capital. This mother with her three children says that the wish to have a job is what keeps her going and says her goal is to reach the United States. I left my country because I don't have a job and I have three children. I'm living with the idea of moving forward because I am alone with them. I wish that they let us pass. My idea is to go to work to move forward with my children. Hundreds have already arrived in the capital and others are arriving at the border with Mexico, all with a clear goal of leaving their country, which they say has denied them the possibility of a better quality of life. And U.S. President Donald Trump has again threatened Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador 
over the migrant caravan. Trump took to Twitter to warn that if Mexico doesn't control the situation, he will send the U.S. military to the southern border to stop the caravan of migrants. He also said he is cutting all funds to those countries. And Mexico's foreign secretary has responded to Trump, saying that his country does not negotiate or do diplomacy through Twitter. Luis Videgaray insists that Mexico wants to find permanent solutions to the Central American migration issue. He says the priority is to respect migrants' human rights. Mexico has requested institutional collaboration of the High Commissioner for Refugees and the Secretary General of the United Nations so that in terms of protocols of Cartagena we have the assistance for the proceeding of refugee applications that the people from this caravan decided to prevent and also find permanent solutions that are consistent with their dignity and their rights. Mexico's government is also warning Honduran migrants of the risks that they may face when entering the country. One of the main concerns is their exposure to human traffickers. Caravan leaders have discussed requirements for visa applications with the National Migration Institute. Meanwhile, President-elect Andrés Manuel López Obrador says he will offer working visas to migrants when he takes office. He said this as a way of offering an alternative to those who decided to leave their countries. The elected president also rejected the threats of the U.S. President Donald Trump to stop migrants from reaching the United States. Let's go to our correspondent in Mexico City, Pablo Perez, with more. So after knowing of the migrant caravan uh, that comes from Central America, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, released another Twitter rant and where he is blaming the governments of Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala, and also Mexico of, well, not caring for their people and, well, letting uh, all these migrants go through through the southern border of, of the United States. He is threatening uh, those countries of cutting off any kind of uh, financial aid that they might get from the United States. And he is saying that he will send troops to the border to close the border to Mexico if Mexico doesn't stop the uh, migrant influx. This uh, caravan uh, that is said to have around 2,000 people uh, has already left uh, El Salvador, Honduras, and is in, in Guatemala right now on en route to Mexico, to the southern state of Chiapas, where they will be received with, uh, by human rights organization, human rights watch uh, organizations and other uh, local migrant aid organization. And well, President Trump's posture contrasts uh, strongly with uh, the uh, president-elect, Andres Manuel López Obrador, that says that the only way of coping with migration is improving their, uh, their life, the quality on their countries of origin. That was Pablo Perez from Mexico City. The Ecuadorian government has expelled the Venezuelan ambassador, Carol Delgado. The decision came after Communications Minister Jorge Rodriguez made some comments on the Ecuadorian President Lenin Moreno. I heard President Lenin Moreno saying that 6,000 Venezuelans in bad health entered in his country. That means that 149 buses had to leave Venezuela daily to Ecuador. Moreno says 1 million Venezuelans arrived to Ecuador. But that is possible only if 140 buses leave Venezuela daily for seven years. In response, Venezuela has declared Ecuadorian Ambassador Elizabeth Mendez persona non grata and says she has 72 hours to leave. In a statement, the foreign ministry says Moreno lied about the number of Venezuelan migrants in Ecuador and their health conditions. The communique added that this is a consequence of the latest visit of U.S. Vice President Mike Pence to Ecuador.
Coming up, more stories. Meanwhile, you can follow us. We're on Twitter at Telesur English and my personal account at Carla G Telesur. So go ahead and give us some retweets. We'll be back. Welcome back. Peru's President Martín Vizcarra has urged Spain to detain and return former Supreme Court Judge César Inostroza. Inostroza, who faces charges for leading a mafia involved in selling sentences and influence peddling, fled from Peru 11 days ago. This prompted the resignation of Interior Minister Mauro Medina. Criminals who have fled the country will have to answer before the courts. In this respect, we are sure that Spain, a democratic country, is inserted in the international community. We will not protect those who are summoned by Peruvian authorities. And Peruvians have taken to the streets once again to reject corruption. They are demanding Congress to be closed down. Every day a new case of corruption and people are fed up. As Peruvians gathered for another protest, news came through that the leader of the white-collar criminal gang and former judge Cesar Inostrosa had escaped from the country. It's totally despicable. The whole political system is responsible, and it starts with the leaders of the Congress. They didn't do what was needed for the Ministry of Justice to be able to act. He has made a mockery of us. He has been protected by the police chief, Jorge Chavez, as well as by the Congress and the justice system. This is just one of the reasons why Peruvians took to the streets again. They are also rejecting a series of arbitrary decisions by the Congress. Among them, the law that lets the dictator Alberto Fujimori and other human rights abusers go free. We will not let him walk free for the murder of our relatives. He had to go back to jail and serve his 25 years. He is pretending to be sick, that he is dying, but God is great and he will have his punishment. The demonstrators say that instead of legislating in favor of the country, Congress has turned into a cover for those accused of corruption. Among them, the public prosecutor Pedro Chaverri and pro-Fujimori congressmen and their allies. It has become a gangster institution. It just serves the powerful, never the people. They are passing laws to protect criminals. There are parties like Popular Force, APRA, just protecting corrupt judges. We asked the president to close Congress immediately. The protest was not only directed at Congress. Peruvians also want the justice system to punish severely the politicians and former presidents accused of corruption. In Brazil, presidential candidate Fernando Haddad from the Workers' Party has condemned illegal online tricks to promote a defamation campaign against him. Haddad has accused his right-wing rival, Jair Bolsonaro, of hiring firms to spread lies through bulk messages via apps. He has responded to a report by the Folia de San Paulo newspaper that discovered contracts worth more than three million U.S. dollars to send out messages attacking him. Today, the Folha do Sao Paulo daily brought proof that there was in fact a meeting of a criminal organization of businessmen that through a slush fund promoted a campaign of defamation, trying to defraud the first round. And Bolsonaro supporters have murdered a trans woman in Sao Paulo. Last Tuesday, a group of male supporters of the right-wing candidate killed the woman in the center of the city. They stabbed her while shouting, Bolsonaro, yes, as a response to the feminist Elenao demonstrations. In this 10 days since the elections, there have been more than 50 violent attacks across 18 states in Brazil. 
Still in Brazil, a court in Sao Paulo has overturned a conviction for torture and murder against the most known mur murderer under the military dictatorship of the 1970s. The ruling is seen as a worrying precedent as the leading candidate in the current presidential race has himself spoken in favor of torture and praised the military rule. The Sao Paulo Court of Justice decided that the statute of limitation does apply to the crime committed by Coronel Brilliante Ustra during the military dictatorship. He was responsible for the torture and murder of the journalist Luis Eduardo Merlino in 1971. The victim's family has been seeking justice for 47 years. The court is very conservative, but I believe that they are also affected by the conservative wave that is now sweeping Brazil today and which serves those who defend torture. In addition, the court didn't find evidence that Ustra took part in the crime committed at the Military Intelligence Center, a notorious torture site which he commanded. The judgment contradicts the early ruling of a lower court and hundreds of testimonies given to the Truth Commission, like that of Eleonora Menicucci, who was also tortured. It is terrifying in terms of truth, memory, and democracy. In Brazil, we are in a fight between civilization and barbarism. After the first court ruling, the case was shelved for six years, and Ustra died a free man. With just days to go before the presidential runoff, this court decided in favor of the men who Jair Bolsonaro praised during the impeachment of Dilma Rousseff. She was also tortured by Colonel Ustra, and as president, she set up Brazil's Truth Commission. According to all the human rights treaties that Brazil signed and ratified, the crime of torture is subject to a ruling of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, which doesn't accept self-amnesty. So the statute of limitations does not apply to torture and murder. In the current climate of political violence in Brazil, the court's decision to grant impunity to someone recognized as the military dictatorship worst killer has caused surprise and shock. Several application-based delivery riders have teamed up in Argentina to form a new trade union. They want their employment status to be formalized. There are over 100,000 Argentinians working as riders, but they are not eligible for certain rights that covers accidents at work, health benefits and retirement plans. Officials from the Provisional Riders Trade Union have already met with lawmakers for setting up basic employment standards. This initiative is the first of its kind in Latin America. We're taking one last short break, but stay with us. And we're back. Clashes between Palestinians and Israeli forces in Canal Amar in the West Bank have intensified since a court ordered its demolition, defying the international pressure. Let's, let's look at the daily struggles of these villagers. A peaceful march by the Bedouin villagers of Canal Mar, with just one demand, not to be enrooted from their homes. As they reach the next street, Israeli forces attack this unarmed group. Israeli soldiers start beating the group and attacking them with pepper spray. <laughs> Minutes later, one protester is badly injured and a woman has been arrested for resisting the army. Since September, this community of nearly 200 people has been under constant threat. Earlier this month, an Israeli court issued an order to raise their village to the ground. Days later, bulldozers start rolling into this village of goat herds and sheep herds. These roads are being made so that Israeli army, bulldozers and buses can enter the streets quickly, one after another for one quick attack and to facilitate the process of evacuation and demolition as soon as possible. <laughs> 
We will not leave this place unless it is by force, and hopefully we will not leave. Even if they demolish, we will rebuild. Again and again, they demolish, we will rebuild. Residents believe this demolition reflects a border Israeli plan to push Palestinians out of East Jerusalem and the West Bank. Territories captured by Israel in the 1967 war, which the Palestinians won back. Canal Mar has become an emblem of the Palestinian struggle for its statehood. If Israel takes over this place, this will mean that the same thing could repeat in 46 other Bedouin communities in this area. With bulldozers preparing for a final offensive, this marginalized community remains determined. They know the future of their struggle depends on this piece of land they call home. Senior Palestinian official Saeb Erekat has condemned the decision of the United States to merge its consulate with the new embassy in Jerusalem. The consulate general, which serves Palestinians, will be merged with the embassy into a single mission. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the decision was aimed at improving the efficiency of its offices. On his part, Erekat said the decision is led by an ideological team that wants to reward Israeli crimes and impose a one-size solution. A court in Benin has sentenced opposition leader Sebastián Ajavón to 20 years in prison over drug charges. The former presidential candidate did not attend the hearing in capital Porto Novo. Ajavón's lawyer have previously said that there were some serious irregularities in this process, calling the allegations absurd and false. Women have marched in Liberia's capital, Monrovia, calling for justice and protection for girls allegedly that were sexually abused by a charity worker. Protesters deliver a petition to several ministries demanding action following the publication of a documentary by ProPublica. The film reveals how the late co-founder of the U.S. charity, Macintosh Johnson, raped girls in a school, open to save them from sexual exploitation. The Liberian vice president is demanding an investigation. Hundreds of pensioners have taken to the streets in France to protest against the latest pension reform. Protesters marched in Paris against the government of Emmanuel Macron. It unveiled a major pension reform for the first quarter of 2019. Pensioners are concerned over their purchase in power. Italy's model migrant town Riazze is struggling to survive. This after the judiciary expelled its mayor, Domenico Lucano, accused of illegal immigration aid. Social movements say Italian authorities want to destroy the integration project presented by this small Calabria village. But neighbors are decided to continue the major's work. I don't have a husband, no marito, I don't have a job. They say the project here is closed. What's going to happen to me and my family? I have four children. Canada's government will move to pardon all persons with a pot possession record of 30 grams or less. Thousands of people stand to benefit from this move. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made the announcement after Canada legalized recreational marijuana. And one of the most famous meteor showers of the year is set to reach its peak this weekend. The Orionoids will be visible in the night sky to most just after the moon sets on Sunday. It's created by particles from Halley's Comet, which passes through the Earth twice a year. As they enter Earth's atmosphere, and they burn up and glow, creating this shooting star effect. And with that, we come to the end of this news brief. For this and many other stories, you can find them on our website at telesurtv.net slash English. Here you can find all the latest information, as you know, and keep an eye on what's happening in the world. So go check it out. You can also follow us on social media. I'm Carla Gonzalez, and until the next time, 
Thank you for watching Telesur, connecting the global south.